editor-in-chief speaks. Hello, everybody. This is Nia Pierce, editor-in-chief at Sheertech.com, and this is going to be another episode of EIC Speaks. So let's go ahead and get right into this thing. So there's been some talks about Xenoblade here recently with the recent nomination for the Game Awards 2016 show, as well as the rumors about Xenoblade Chronicles X potentially being a port for the Nintendo Switch. So I'm pretty much on my Xenoblade high right now. I'm really, really excited about the possibility of a Xenoblade Chronicles X port for Switch. And more importantly, uh, the fact that Monolith Soft have already said that they are currently working on their new game for the Nintendo Switch. So that's even more exciting than a port. And just the fact that this game was nominated to begin with. I mean, this is one of my favorite games at the end of 2015. And it was so slept on and I am just so happy that it's being recognized right now. So I'm pretty excited making this video right now. I'm not even gonna lie. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the Game Awards is gonna be happening this week. Uh, gamers far and wide are buzzing about which games they think deserve to win each category. And of course, there's a lot of people that only really wanna see the game trailers and the bloopers. If you guys haven't had a chance to check out the latest Boss Lair Level 2, the crew and I have been thinking up our predictions about the Game of the Year awards, and then it suddenly hit me. You know, Xenoblade Chronicles X, my favorite game of 2015, was nominated. It is officially a thing. And last year, it barely missed the Game Awards 2015 due to its December release date because it released on December 4th, which was actually a couple of days after the awards. But that's okay because this time it's going to be in the nominations and it's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the other great RPGs that came out within the last year, like Dark Souls 3, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine, which is an expansion of the original World of Warcraft Legion, another expansion. And while I can't help but scratch my head at the fact that two of the four of these competitors are expansions, their base games are great, so I guess you can't really rule them out too much and they really should not be underestimated at all. That being said, I do think that Xenoblade Chronicles X easily stands strong on its own two feet, and here are some of the reasons why I think that a nomination is rightfully deserved and potentially even a win. It would be great if Xenoblade Chronicles X got this win and got the exposure that I believe that it deserves. So first of all, what makes Xenoblade Chronicles X great to me is for what the game does on the Wii U at a technical level is definitely a marvel. We all know that the Wii U is hands down the weakest system out of the three right now. But for what Xenoblade Chronicles X is doing on the Wii U, I am just incredibly impressed. The huge open world of this game, guys. This game's world is bigger than Fallout 4, The Witcher 3, and Skyrim combined. This game is huge, and it's huge, but it's not without its liveliness. It's not some barren world. There's many species to go and discover. There's many things to collect. There's many people that you run into on the way. Amazing, just huge, amazing game. The beautiful set pieces in the world design. There are some really iconic pieces in the different continents of this world. If you guys have played Xenoblade Chronicles X, you already know, like if you go to places like Oblivia and they've got like these big ancient rings, they've kind of been molded in and kind of caved with the world. I guess they've been there for long periods of time over decades and centuries and centuries of time. And just little marvels like that, little pieces like that, just make the world and the continents and themselves feel alive. The game itself, like I mentioned, is huge. It's just as vertical as it is horizontal. It literally has no invisible walls. So if you can see it, you can access it, guys. Secondly, the gameplay mechanics and the action are intuitive and clever. There's so much to the actual gameplay mechanics itself. And I didn't play the original Xenoblade, but from people who have played the original Xenoblade, it was pretty much a similar gameplay dynamic. The way that the, the game plays is that 
it's kind of like a combination of turn-based and action. You have a combination of these things called arts and then you have skills that you use to make your character respond to that certain action. So for example, there's like the auto attack and then there's some also also some little special things that my character does. And if you combine all of those special little things together, you go into this mode called overdrive. And what overdrive basically means is that you're going really fast, you're attacking really quickly, and it basically cuts your battle time in half. The way that they do the combat I think is just so genius and I'm so glad that they did this in place of a typical you know hack and slash or a typical uh, button mashing type of gameplay mechanic. You also have things like the visions like you can choose what union so to speak that you want to be in. I chose to be a reclaimer and basically what a reclaimer means is you go and collect pieces of your spacecraft that crashed on this planet and you find different bits and pieces of um, this thing called the life hold which basically keeps the consciousness and the DNA of humankind making sure that humankind does not become extinct and all of the different divisions have different functions that's just an example of what my character did the music in this game is so great the way that the music is pieced together for different battle situations and even the overdrive mode like I mentioned before has a really dope soundtrack and th the music also gives really great ambiance and feelings to these worlds and the music is a large part of the reason why this planet feels so alive for example if you go into this continent called Noctilum the music there is just so encapturing oh my god it's beautiful beautiful music there's so many things to do in this game and things to look out for you have to make sure you you're getting your rank up get your blade rank up which is your rank within your division or your union battle points credits and meranium which are kind of like the in-game currency kind of gives you access to other things in the game so not only is the game itself the main story and plot very great very immersive very clever but there's also this overarching meta game in xenoblade chronicles x it's so many different games within a game and all of it feels like it makes sense all of it feels like it's part of a greater good and it never feels like a chore you know you've got your main missions you've got your side missions you've got your affinity missions or your heart-to-heart -heart missions that strengthens the ties between you and other characters even non-playable characters and it's just so much to this game you guys and there's also differences in the way that you play this game when you first start off with playing xenoblade chronicles x you're on foot so you're traversing this huge world on foot with no vehicle. Then you eventually get enough of a skill set to where you are able to get your scale, which is the mech in this game. But you can't fly at first. So you're limited to on foot combat on your person as well as your mech. And then you eventually gain the ability to fly. And depending on your altitude, the game changes dramatically. The game looks different when you're on ground. It feels different when you're on ground, on your mech. And it feels extremely different when you finally get the ability to fly. And don't make no mistakes, guys. There's enemies on the ground and then there's enemies in the air too. There's so many enemies in the air that you would have never even thought were there you won't know it until you have the ability to fly it's a completely different game depending on your altitude and of course you've got things like the end game which are the things that you could do online well i guess it's it's a combination of the meta game and the end game you've got your squad tasks you've got your squad missions and your global nemesis battles and squad tasks and squad missions are things that you and a group of your people can do together over an internet connection and global nemesis you can do uh, these missions with your friends over an internet connection as well and they're basically just big boss battles like if you've ever played monster hunter global nemesis battles are essentially monster hunter battles on steroids but there's not that many of them i really wish that the game had better online functionality but what you can do in the game alone is just is almost overwhelming if you've never played a game this big 
just the way that Xenoblade Chronicles X operates. It's basically a game within a game within a game. There's so much to do, so much to see, so much to explore. It's just this game, <laughs> this game, that's all I can say. The plot and character development are dangerously immersive. Now, this plot of the game is pretty much your typical JRPG story. At first glance, it's basically your planet was attacked and destroyed. And so you and your crew have to recover and build up mankind because it is imperative that you guys survive so that humankind can thrive. So you find yourself on this planet called Planet Mira. And there's some really strange things going on with this planet. And I don't really want to go into the plot because I don't want to spoil it. But the, the planet itself, along with the inhabitants of this planet, kind of have a life of their own. And this is kind of the thing that you explore during the main story and the side missions as well. And you kind of get to know more about this planet and more about the people and the inhabitants of this planet. Another great thing about the plot development, which I think is probably the most important part, the plot is kind of like... You know, it's kind of like your typical RPG story, but the NPCs and the people that you run into are really kind of what bring the story to life and are really what kind of make the story what it is. The NPCs aren't useless like in a lot of games where you just kind of talk to them, they kind of say the same stuff over and over. The NPCs and the characters that you, that you encounter in this game have a purpose and they also have their own lore and their own backstories that you kind of find out over time doing things like side missions and your affinity missions and things like that and um it's the same way for your party members you know your party members are with you 24 7 and there are some people that you could take on your party with you some others um like in the blade core and sometimes other xeno races that you could take with you so there's just so much character building in this game that just adds tenfold to the plot itself Living the life of a blade, which is an acronym for Builders of the Legacy After the Destruction of Earth, which you're basically kind of like a foot soldier trying to make sure that you guys can create Planet Mirror to be sustainable for human life. When human life ultimately is um, excavated when you're finding that life hole that I mentioned earlier. So you really feel that you're doing something with high stakes and high reward. It never, ever, ever feels like a chore. And like I mentioned before, you know, the other Xeno races have also been called to the planet somehow. There's something weird going on with this planet that has drawn all of these other life forms there. And you're trying to figure out exactly what that is and why that is. And, you know, just talking to these other races and talking to these the other inhabitants of this world it's just really interesting, man. You really, really, really get into it. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, Xenoblade Chronicles X is easily at the top of my favorite game list and sits very close to one of my favorites, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, for a Wii. I mean, this game literally came out of nowhere and rocked my world, you guys. This game is just so great so grand so larger than life it is definitely a sleeper in my opinion and to see this game up there in the nomination pool with games like the witcher 3 and dark souls 3 i mean goodness it deserves it so much and and to be honest i think it deserves to win but the fact that it's up there as a nominee at all just <laughs> it blows my mind I, I can barely record this video right now because i'm just thinking about the greatness of this game. If you have a Wii U and you haven't had a chance to play Xenoblade Chronicles X, goodness, get your hands on it, get your hands on it, get your hands on it, that's all I can say. If the port rumor is true and you opted out of a Wii U and you are thinking about getting a Nintendo Switch, if it happens, guys, you have to play this game. This game is so great and i'm gonna be looking forward to seeing the game awards on december the first and man i got my fingers crossed i don't think it's gonna win because so many people slept on it and then you know it was limited by the install base of the wii u so a lot of people didn't get to play it but man i got my fingers crossed guys this game deserves it so that's all i have to say for you guys right now i'm sorry i sound so flustered but this game just does that to me you guys it's such an emotional it's such an emotional game for me because it really did just come and just knock me off 
my feet like seriously but anyways i don't want to ramble too much about my love for this game let me know what you think about xenoblade chronicles x in the comments below have you played it do you want to play it just tell me how you feel tell me if you have any general comments at all about the game awards if you haven't checked out the latest boss layer level two don't forget to go and check it out because we do talk more in detail about the game awards coming up so let us know what you think, man. Leave a comment below. Talk to you later. Peace.